So I saw The Muppets the other night, this being the 2011 installment directed by James Bobbin and starring, well, starring The Muppets with Jason Segel and Amy Adams having secondary roles as lovers in a stereotypical situation. And it's the kind of situation that we all know very well, where the man has to learn that his priority is to be the perfect prince for the woman by remembering their anniversary dinner, and he goes through a series of steps before he understands the importance of that occasion. And then it's up to the woman to throw all of his revelations about being a properly symbolic man away by returning him to save the day of the adventure that he probably never should have left in the first place. And he only did so because of feeling uh, social pressure that the conventions place upon him. And it's a rather odd narrative choice, but one that's to be expected in a Disney film. And some of the other stereotypical things are the theme that you have to believe in yourself just so long as you believe in yourself within the conventional parameters of the status quo. Now, one thing that's very interesting in the film that kind of is odd in the context of this dominant culture um, propaganda is the theme of corporate control over entertainment. Now, on the surface, Chris Cooper plays an oil tycoon who wants the land that hosts the Muppet Studios because of the oil that's lurking underneath it. And there's also some ideas that he wants to own the name the Muppets or the own the Muppets brand. Um, in fact, he wants to replace the Muppets with the Muppets, who are a vile imitation of the Muppets. Uh, they call themselves a hard, cynical act for a hard, cynical world, but what they really are is a really crappy imitation who play in scummy bars and use the general rubric of the Muppets act in order to make a living. Now, without getting too deeply into the details of the plot, what happens is that the Muppets, the real Muppets, try to raise $10 million to save their studio. And as a secondary gain, they want to revive interest in the Muppets as an entertainment act and get their careers back. And so they clean house, set up the cameras, set up the lights, and rehearse, and they try to find their special guest star, which is, of course, a keystone in the Muppets logic. As it happens, they can't find one, so they kidnap Jack Black, who, rather against character, feigns desperation and hatred for having been forced into participating in a production that in real life Jack Black probably would have loved, which is gives the humor to the situation, uh, this irony that he is uh, suffering such great pain by having to be involved in the Muppets production. Um, and this is a really interesting statement in the film because the form of resistance the Muppet use against the threat of corporate control represented by the oil tycoon is to hijack a celebrity, to hijack an entertainment commodity, and to put it to work within the rubric of their own collective action. And the oil tycoon responds by destroying first their telephone lines so that they can't receive donations, and then later electricity. And this kind of symbolizes the destruction of internet telecommunications we're currently seeing with SOPA and ACTA. Now, I'm not trying to draw a one-to-one -one correlation here, but it is very interesting to me that even after the electricity is cut off and the telephone lines have gone dead, that the Muppets carry on, and they take their show out into the streets, where a mass of people have gathered to protest the oil tycoon's attempts to destroy the Muppets. And is it really any coincidence that such a story appears on the scene now, at this time, with Sopa and Acta? I don't know, I find it very odd, and I'm not sure how to resolve the image, particularly given how this rather progressive action comes to us in the context of the worn and vapid concern, conservative family values that Disney has been disseminating for most of its time as one of the world's leading entertainment empires. Mm -hmm.